Hi, it's Bernie Goldbach from www.insideview.ie, but you're looking actually at notes from the underground. There's a story in the Sunday Times magazine, written by Ariel Leaf, about Christina Kreiger, the only survivor of living in the sewers in Poland, and lived Poland. Good story, really interesting. Kids, and the story of a Jewish family, along with many others, trying to survive. They didn't all make it out. The story is now a film. It's nominated for the Oscars. It's, um, you can find it on sometimes.co.uk in darkness. Really interesting stories about how she came out. Looking at sunshine like a red ball. Everybody in red, foggy, not clear. Her brother was so scared when he came out. Started to cry. Told his mother he wanted to go back. I want to go home. I want to go home. He cried. This was his home. The sewer. A young four and a half year old. Traumatic living underground. And a great story. I'll have a look at some other news, a quick flick, uh, which I just talked about technology and some people. Uh, the long form or long read of the week in the Sunday Times and the Sunday Independent and the Sunday Business Post is about this Treasury Holdings. Gavin Daly writes a story in the Sunday Times about the National Asset Management Agency and the um, adversarial relationship now they have with Treasury Holdings. The big deal is this. The National Asset Management Agency, NAMA, made a decision to appoint receivers on December 8th, but didn't tell Treasury until January 9th. Now, the issue behind the scenes is it would appear that international investors are being pushed back by NAMA, which is in contrary, it's contrary to the charter as has been set up. Samantha McGarkin kind of makes that point, how she names the different investors that um, basically weren't invited to the table by, the, by NAMA. Treasury has sorted them out, but it didn't work out. Gloves come off as Treasury versus NAMA hits the high court. Samantha writes a big story about it. The general point they're going to make in court is that NAMA refused to engage with potential international bidders. It's going to make a big impact because Ireland hopes NAMA can actually sell stuff and not keep it for their own little pet reasons. Interesting. Catherine O'Mahony writes stories about pinning hopes on yet another new media fad. She looks at Pinterest. This time points out that Eason, the bookseller, is trying to use Pinterest perhaps to promote new books. If you went to Pinterest right now, then looked at what Ireland was trending on Ireland, see a lot of scenes. You'd also see some book titles. I used Pinterest and using it since about 2009. Been around for a little while. And I also use the skim links behind it works out. Technology, Dick O'Brien points it out, one that I would recommend. It's called Max Rome. He does a profile, Jerry McQuaid, about the lucrative deal that they've uh, just signed with Vodafone. Well done, Pat Phelan, if you're watching this. And finally, well done, Patty Cosgrave. He gets name checked by the Marion Finucane Show, doing a lot for entrepreneurs in Ireland. Our entrepreneur is inside the house, but you can't see her. She's dressed up today. We had a freezing uh, situation last night, but still, our rose is happening. Check out the rest of the photos that are blooms as they emerge on www.insideview.ie as well as our Flickr photo stream. Flickr.com stroke photos, stroke Irish eyes. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.